r slash ask reddit what is unethical as dark but is extremely common practice in the business world hiding fees until the service is provided i was in a car accident that required an ambulance ride and i was charged double for it apparently the two ambulance companies in my area are in cahoots so rather than share the business in my area 50 stroke 50, they apparently devise a way to split it 100 stroke 100. They each have one person from the other company ride in their company's ambulance. The explanation I received was since a medic from the other company was riding along in the ambulance I took. They now can both charge me, again. They didn't split the fee. They each charge me fully. It's almost a brilliant scheme, but also absolutely unethical and ridiculous. And I can't fathom how this is even legal. On a side note, they didn't even treat me on the ride. Imagine airlines double charging for a seat because one of the pilots was from another airline. Insanity. I don't know about unethical as dark, but going through the motions of pretending to entertain outside candidates when you've already decided on who internally will get the job, wastes everyone's time. Sometimes it's company policy to post and interview for all positions. Especially within a union setting. It's extremely frustrating because I've been dragged through a good half dozen interviews callbacks when they already had someone lined up. Usually someone's relative. Yes, this happened to me as well. Internal job applications are tailored for the specific candidate. And they just interview other applicants because they are bound by HR rules saying they must. Purposefully giving part time employees erratic schedules so they can't take on a second job. Dang. Never even thought about this. I always wondered why it was so hard to give people normal, set schedules. This opens my eyes. It's to make it easy to cut hours. An employee under constant threat of less hours is more compliant, and easier to get rid of, without risk. Giving your employees just few enough hours that they don't qualify as a full-time employee, so you don't have to pay them benefits. I worked at Walmart in high school. There were older adults who worked tons of overtime, really out their heart into the company. How were they rewarded? At the end of the pay period, they had shifts cancelled to keep them under 40 hours. Such a garbage company. You can bet when I witnessed people sharplifting I looked the other way. Duck that company. Not just cancelled shifts. Written up for going more than 5 minutes over your scheduled clock out time within a pay period. If suddenly tasked with something from management 10 minutes before the end of your shift, you better complete it with enough time to spare to sprint to the time clock to get out on time. Oh, yep, yeah, this is usually being called to register in the middle of a rush. But if you clock out and are approached by a customer with a question, you are supposed to still direct them to one of the non-existent people out on the floor. Because they only staff for restocking in the morning or running registers. Or hell them yourself. Loyalty is punished by laying the most work on the most productive. While overlooking these workers for promotions. If you're a great worker, they give you the shit jobs because you don't beach and moan. I can confirm. I was moved 5x in one year at my last job because I wouldn't raise a fuss. I also was one of the few to work every team. It didn't help me come lay off time. Edit. The last move that year was to a different building and department. They told me the day I came back from bereavement. I'm still salty about that 7 years later. Chronically and purposely understaffing. Looking at you. Retail and assisted living companies. The staff who take care of our aging citizens are being treated like dirt. I never realized. No family members in LTC facilities. How bad this problem was until I did a clinical rotation in a nursing home. One nurse to 20 patients. One CNA to 10 patients. They were absolutely not being turned briefs checked every 2 hours. Barely getting full bed baths daily. Let alone personal interaction that is vital for quality of life and well-being at that age. It breaks my goddamn heart to watch the CNAs deal with patients. Yanking them around in the beds. And apparently I was at one of the better facilities in town. I will cry if I ever have to put my parents or grandparents in a home like that. ETA. I've said this in comments below. But I am absolutely not putting blame on the CNA aides. This is an incredibly complex issue of making LTC affordable. But also needing to pay staff. As well as having enough cash left over to actually treat patients. Most CNA's aides are saints. 
and those people are very much appreciated and respected. Burnout is very real. You are worth so much more than $10 12 slasher. I love you. Thank you for everything you do for your patience. Not paying invoices until you've been chased multiple times. As standard policy. Had a boss who did this, but hated it when people did it to them. Boss claimed they paid late because everyone else did, but there are plenty of arguments each way there. Boss also hated it when one creditor applied to have the company wound up, liquidated, for non-payment because of the delay. In Boss's semi-defense it was like the proverbial sledgehammer to crack a nut. The bill was for a relatively small amount of money. In the creditor's defense, I think they were making a point about the whole late payment practice in general. A tactic that should be used more often. It's usually cheap and easy, and nothing moves a payment like the threat of bankruptcy. Raising prices before putting items on sale. Looking at you, Coles. As a former Coles cashier, I can attest that they are the worst with this. It should be illegal. I worked as a fraud investigator at a bank. We have rules and laws that we have to abide by. All the company got fined. I had a higher up, probably second or third tier from CEO, tell us explicitly that there are no exceptions to the rules except for our more affluent customers. That's why I hate management. They lie. Oh next year you guys will have the holidays off. I'm still working every holiday. You can't use your cell phones because it's a security issue. A security guard will escort anyone out that uses their phone same manager walks by on their cell phone an hour later. If it's not in print, it's just talk. Firing someone the moment you find out they're looking for another job. This is something I'm actually quite impressed with my current workplace. They know I'm actively looking for a job. But they're still sending me to trainings so I can use that in future employment opportunities. Sometimes employers hope that employees realize that it's not always greener on the other side. I've had employees that left because they wanted more money. Their salaries were already competitive. What they later failed to realize was that the little things they had at the office were not available at the other company. Not telling people employees that the company or division has a planned date to shut down. Then letting them go the day of. This happens everywhere from major mega corporations to mom and pop restaurants. There are reasons as to why. Given that there's still money to be made up until the last minute and you don't want your employees to slack off. And while obviously it's devastating to the employees who get laid off. It can also be pretty bad to the employees aren't getting laid off but have to be told ahead of time and can't say anything. It's also to protect stock. At least with public companies. If investors find out that a company is going bust they will run. The stock price and value of the company plummets. And the business goes out of business even quicker. Absolutely. And not just stocks. If there's other money coming in like advertising sales or product orders. They don't want to devalue that months ahead of time. Larger companies that kill competition innovation by buying out smaller companies just to stop what the smaller company is doing or even keep lobbying the government to create barriers restrictions for entry. My private lab company got bought by a huge lab solely because we were the only lab 400 of miles that could do a specific set of tests. Within months of buying us, they fired half the company and we lost accreditation for the test and they were never able to regain it. Now they've turned us into a service provider and everything we do is based on how much money we can bring the company. Overworked. Stressed. 50% of the building is always looking for new jobs. And I presume the market suffers. 2. Now that the only local provider of those tests disappeared. Favoritism. Promoting people into positions who have no business being there. Treating people bad. To make them quit the job because you don't have the balls to fire them or you are afraid that the word your company can fire someone anytime will spread and you will lose control. I think this has to do with avoiding paying benefits. I think employers can sometimes be made to pay some amount of their fired employees unemployment benefits. There are a million different variables to consider how and when this sort of this would apply, though. In the US, unemployment benefits basically work like an insurance policy. If you fire someone, that person makes a claim and get paid. Then the employer's unemployment insurance rates go up because a claim had to be paid. So yes, companies actively avoid firing because if they force you to quit, then your claim gets denied and their rates don't go up. 
firing a manager than dumping their responsibilities on a regular worker with no pay raise. More generally, not replacing workers as they exit and dumping the workload on the dwindling staff without increased pay. And paid internships are supposed to be on-site learning opportunities but are often just slave labor. It's actually illegal for an unpaid intern to do anything that can be considered work for the company, but it hardly gets reported because those interns won't need that slave internship to get into their career field. And paid overtime, more colloquially referred to as being on salary. Mrs. had a job in a mom and pop's marketing firm. They were highly overworked salaried employees. The conversation came up about hiring another designer. The boss's response why the duck would I hire another employee when I can make all of you salaried employees work 24 7 if I wanted to. The business is now on life support and has gone from 10 employees to 2. Edit. Been away for a bit. Mom and pops equals locally ran and owned business. And yes she was an idiot and a Karen before I even knew what a Karen was. Unfortunately she rode on the success of breaking her employees and owns a lot of property and never truly failed. She is also a very close friend of a major car dealership owner, which still uses her broken marketing company. Last I heard, I don't wish death on anyone, but for her, I wish a long torturous life worse than death itself. And paid internships. No excuse for this. Selling user data. This is massive. Large organizations who donate contribute large amounts to non-profits. 501 C3S. Frequently strong arm the little charities they basically support into giving up that data for their personal groups marketing and data. I give us your membership information a wink wink you might have some issues with your budget next year there are a bunch of 501 C3S in Wyoming that got their data used by the Stora Foundation groups during the last few election cycles here. Best way to win votes. Play to their heartstrings or where they donate. Edit. Tons of bigger money groups do this. I'm just specifying the one I have experience with. When I worked part time at Sam's Club, the manager was intentionally cutting our hours back to take away from our bonus and add to his at the end of the year. This also happened when my husband and I worked at the Home Depot. The bonus was more than some people make annually. One of the Asms straight up bought a new car. My old salaried position requires copious amounts of overtime. In the end my hourly wage was less than the people I was supervising. Salary is a ducking scam. Their whole argument is that way it doesn't matter how much you work you get paid the same amount. So if you have a slow week with little to do, you can leave early and not worry. It'll just be balanced out when it's crunch time and you have to do and paid OT. Thing is, there's basically never a time where you have so little work you can skip out. And on the occasions that you can. Good luck not getting in trouble for making the company pay you for not doing anything. Never mind that you're doing extra work for no pay far more often. Salary is a scam because they put a floor on the amount of hours you're expected to work but not a ceiling. Employer wage theft is said to exceed the amount of normal theft in the US. HTTPS colon slash slash en wikipedia org wiki wage theft. White collar crime dwarfs the kind of crime cops will go after. Heck, what cops take legally through forfeiture is more than all the illegal theft. When the criminals can make the laws they tend to exempt themselves. It's just business. Firing people for medical issues. I don't know about all the state CTC if anyone knows please illuminate. A co-worker of mine took a long medical leave for a spinal issue she was having with her neck. I believe she had surgery and then was on leave for a few weeks. Doc recommended not working more than 4 hours a day. When she came back with that news to HR they fired her on the spot. I thought medical issues would be a discriminatory termination but apparently they can just let you go if the state is at will. Sorry you had this invasive surgery that cost you a fortune but you don't have a job anymore see ya. If this is the US, that is illegal for most workers. FMLA. FMLA protection runs out after 12 weeks, and it only applies after you work there a year, and only if you worked 1250 hours in the last 12 months. It's super easy to get rid of people for medical reasons that don't violate FMLA as long as you're willing to be patient. Lobbying the government to change the law to benefit your business. You pay for electioneering. They get elected and hook you up. Lower taxes. Weakened regulations. Etc. Hacking democracy. 
zero hour contracts. Basically you are a full time employee, but have no set hours, and have to come when you're called, or otherwise be scheduled as they see fit. Edit. Lots of queries. Here is a Wikipedia article on this issue that answers most questions better than I can. HTTPS colon slash slash EN M Wikipedia or Wiki Zero Hour Contract giving people an hour below what is considered full time so they don't need benefits, and also apparently changing people's time cards frequently. Every job I've had has done that, and at the expense of my hours pay too. Changing time cards is very illegal, not just unethical. My job had an e-login system for the time cards and forbade us from looking at how many hours we had. I'd ask the boss to check it for me and he'd say, you can do math, add it up by hand. However they changed their tune very quickly when I pointed out I somehow had been paid for 15 minutes less than my calculations. Bribes are super common. Hire them as independent contractors so that you don't have to actually give them any benefits, travel, healthcare, etc. And so you have a quick tax retort, but still force them to sign exclusive contracts where you can't work anywhere else. WWE would be freaking screwed if anyone with money ever tried suing them and didn't take a settlement. Settlements mean no decision can be made. It would force a decision they wouldn't like. Insider trading nepotism. Fun fact, JFK's dad got rich by inside trading back when it was still legal. He was later appointed head of the SEC. The first thing he did was make insider trading illegal. JFK's dad got rich bootlegging during prohibition. Letting people ass kiss their way to the top when they are highly unqualified happens more than it should and causes a lot of issues for people who are under them or who didn't get that position because they don't ass kiss, but are way more qualified. The general practice of being able to cut you loose with zero notice, but if an employee decides to leave, they need two weeks notice, and even then, companies will raise a stink. It's completely legal to quit your job without a two weeks notification. You simply risk burning bridges there. Fine print. Open bracket. I always read it because all the bad stuff is there. But so many don't know to- I think we don't read it not because we don't know about the threat, but because we feel powerless to do anything about it. I know I do. Hiding all your assets and going into bankruptcy so you don't have to pay the people you screwed over with your addictive medications. Over half of US university instructors are part-time faculty, paid per class, adjuncts and graduate students, non-full-time, no job security, no benefits. Often these teachers commute school to school to cover enough hours to make a living wage. Tenured professors work hard and deserve the benefits they receive, usually, but the rest of the faculty are barely making a living and can barely pay off their own school loans. Edit. HTTPS colon slash slash org sites default files slash 10,112,018 divided by 20 data percent 20 snapshot percent 20 tenure PDF In Australia businesses would open for 11 months. They would sell products for cheaper than their competitors could because they paid no tax on them. Then when tax time came they would wind up the business to start a new one in a month's time. It was so common business tax went from being done yearly, like income tax, to being done 3 monthly, might be even more frequent now. I've been out of Australia for the last 18 years. Suicide your witness before he gives info on your rich pedophile buddies. The technique where places like Starbucks open an unnecessary amount of stores, so that their competition such as smaller, family owned coffee shops are out of business, then close the extra shops down. So I have visited it. Someone commented the name of it. Market saturation. Strongly encouraging employees to not share their salaries with one another so that you can play favorites without anyone finding out. At will employment. Firing people and lying about why you fired them. Making people sign non-competes without financial compensation attached. Firing someone because of a medical condition. Happened to me. I hope they burn for it. Categorizing your employees as salaried simply so that you don't have to pay them overtime if they are forced to stay late. But wait, you came in late? Make up those hours. Some airlines don't refund the money for the ticket even if the passenger couldn't travel because they died. Medical business. 
trying to stop people from getting procedures. Like a vasectomy because you think they'll regret it. Planes overbooking their flights. You are literally selling something you don't have. Telling the government you're losing money so you appear to have losses and then telling the bank you are making money to show you can repay a loan. Subcontracting manufacturing to countries with poor labor standards and practices. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.